know this. The Obama administration is preparing to sell America out to a handful of private corporations. Well, more than a handful, but anyhow, that's because right now President Obama is preparing to push through the largest trade deal in human history, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, or, if it's, or as it's more commonly known, the TPP. If approved, the TPP would create a whole new set of rules regulating the economies of 12 countries, the red countries seen here, on four different continents bordering the Pacific Ocean. These rules cover everything from pharmaceuticals to digital copyright law and could permanently change the way everyday Americans and people all over the world interact with the global economy. So if you think the Obama administration, you, you would think as a result of this, that the Obama administration would want to keep the public as up to date as possible on such a big trade deal, right? Wrong. The United States has negotiated the TPP almost entirely in secret with the help of about 600 private corporations. Most of what we know about it actually comes from leaked documents. And those documents paint a pretty scary picture. Now, thanks to WikiLeaks, we have an even better idea of just how dangerous the TPP really is. Earlier today, WikiLeaks released a full draft of the treaty's intellectual property rights chapter. The 95-page document proves what many people have long suspected, that the TPP isn't so much a free, tr a free trade deal as, as it is a giant giveaway to monster transnational corporations. According to WikiLeaks, the TPP would allow private foreign corporations to sue countries over regulations that those corporations don't like. It would allow them to expand the monopoly powers of pharmaceutical patents. And it would also give corporations the go-ahead to start blocking websites accused of violating copyright law. The documents also show that the Obama administration, on behalf of the United States, has been pushing for some of the TPP's harshest intellectual property laws. To put it bluntly, the TPP would sacrifice national sovereignty, public health, and internet freedom, all in the name of helping private corporations keep their CEOs' wallets fat and their shareholders happy. That's why the TPP is so much more dangerous than normal trade deals like NAFTA or CAFTA. Not only does it reward companies that send jobs overseas and gut regulations that keep big businesses in check, it also increases corporate control over pretty much every part of how you and I interact with the world and makes it near impossible for countries to fight back against giant corporations. As Julian Assange said about the leaked documents, if instituted, the TPP's intellectual property regime would trample over individual rights and free expression as well as ride roughshod over the intellectual and creative commons. If you read, write, publish, think, listen, dance, sing, or invent, if you farm or consume food, if you're ill now or one, one day might be ill, the TPP has you in its crosshairs. In other words, it puts the rights of profit-driven businesses over the rights of human beings and the governments that we form to protect ourselves. No wonder, then, that the Obama administration doesn't even want Congress to take a closer look at the TPP. To push the U.S. into the proposed treaty as soon as possible, the president is trying to use a special legislative trick called fast-tracking that would prevent lawmakers from making any amendments to the TPP. Instead, the treaty would be sent right to the floor, where it would only have to pass a simple majority vote. Sounds like a done deal, right? Well, not so fast. A growing number of bipartisan lawmakers, including people as far away from each other on the political spectrum as Michelle Bachman and John Lewis, are banding together to fight back against the president's TPP plan. They're calling for an open debate on the treaty and have asked the Obama administration to hold back on pushing for fast-track powers. So will they succeed? And what's the deeper story here? For more on this, I'm joined now by Mike Papantonio, attorney and host of Ring of Fire Radio, Ring of Fire Television. Pap, welcome back. Tom, how are you? Just great. Hey, as I just mentioned, there's growing congressional opposition to both the TPP and President Obama's decision to try to reauthorize Fast Track to pass this thing, which a power that he doesn't have right now. It expired in 2008, as I recall. Uh, do you think today's WikiLeaks revelations are going to help, hurt? How, how, you know, what effect are they going to have on all this? They are extremely important because what the American public sees now, and, and this is this is going to be this is going to take the same shape that we saw with Syria, 
uh, with Larry Summers, with the, uh, the pipeline, it, it, XL pipeline, you're going to see so much anger about this once people understand what has been happening to them behind closed doors. It's so secretive, as a matter of fact, that even the people working on it had to, find a, had to, had to sign a classified information non-disclosure agreement, and that's how he's kept it secret. But real problematic is why would a president that runs on the idea of being the people's candidate want to keep this so quiet when it puts so many people out of jobs and is such a huge threat to every facet of the American public. Why would he want to keep that secret? That's the big question. I think I know the answer. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm guessing for you that's not a rhetorical question. What do you think the answer is? Well, I think it, it all comes down to the fact that the, it, we, we saw the same thing happen with Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton was surrounded by the Robert Rubin types, by, by the Penny Pritzker types, by, uh, by the Wall Street types. That's where Bill Clinton's money came from. Uh, we have ignored the fact that Obama came up the same way. It's simply a continuation of what we saw with the Bill Clinton administration, with NAFTA and CAFTA. Now he has made promises. There's nothing else you can read into this. He's made promises. He had to make promises in order to get elected to get all that money from Wall Street. And now it's payback time. Wall Street had the good sense to understand there's no way that anybody with a brain in a gag reflex could ever put up with this type of legislation or this type of treaty, so he kept it quiet, intentionally tried to hide it from the American public and the press. I think one of the most interesting parts of this is, well, actually, I, the only part that we really know right now is this intellectual property part, but that's, you know, both damning and fascinating. I'm curious your thoughts about the revelation, I, probably the biggest revelation in this, was that it's the United States who's pushing hardest for this. It, it seems to me like I'm seeing the uh, the hand of Microsoft and Disney and Sony and whatnot behind this, uh, but maybe the pharmaceutical companies. I mean, that's an area that oh, you big, uh, big time. super specialize in. Your thoughts? Big time. Well, what, what has happened is Exxon, Dupont, uh, Dow Chemical, Eli Lilly, Merck, all the big companies have already had great success just gaming the system and taking away sovereignty by way of NAFTA. NAFTA is very weak where it comes to, to for a, a foreign entity's right to come in and change a sovereign law. TPP puts NAFTA on steroids. But already we've seen the oil companies force people in Canada that said, you know, we don't want you drilling in our backyard. They've been forced, they've been sued, uh, and the legislation that prevents that, uh, that, that drilling has been thrown to the side. Same way with fracking, same way with uh, pricing of pharmaceuticals. This is a complete uh, takeover of what we hold so dearly, and that's the right for us to be able to govern ourselves, Tom. And really, this is the last stage, uh, if this were to succeed, this is the last stage of making the United States into something akin to Saipan in this sense. It creates what we call job scarcity. If you have 20 people that are applying for the same job, the employer is able to say, "No, we're not going to honor OSHA. We're not going to. Uh, we're not going to honor regulations. We're not going to pay a, a, a minimum wage. We're not going to allow for unionization." And all of a sudden, uh, that the the person right behind that guy applying for the job says, "Well, I'll take the job." Look. When you take regulations away, when you let corporations get involved in interfering with sovereign regulations and sovereign laws, it always works to the benefit of the corporation. That's the, that's the gotcha. That's the gotcha part of this whole thing. That's where it's headed. Obama knows it. He's not an idiot. He simply is owned and operated by Wall Street. And it's hard to admit it, but that's the guy we elected. And now we're seeing it. This is a telltale of what this man really is all about. Why else would he keep it a secret? What's the word on when this thing is going to drop? Well, I think what at this point it's going to be slowed down dramatically. That what what's going to happen is they have to get this through with Obama. He has to be the guy, because there's a good there's a good possibility that Hillary won't be able to do it. Hillary's going to be running for cover as she sees this pendulum swing and progressives get more and more involved with saying, you know, damn it, we're tired of centrist politics. We're tired of Democrats acting like damn Republicans. And Hillary, you better not stand behind this. So. 
Obama is the last chance they have. They're going to put full tilt, full speed behind this thing every way they can. And the only thing that's going to stop it, Sam, uh, the only thing that's going to stop is, is, is Tom, is people like you and me and uh, Sam, who I was talking about this radio show with me, and, and Bobby Kennedy and the people that are out in the, in the, in, in the media that is not mainstream media, but the citizens' media. They're going to stop this. This is where the anger, this is where the real anger is going to come in. Yeah, 30 seconds, Pap. There's absolute radio silence in the corporate media on this. Why? Oh, they want it. Listen, this is great for corporate media. It sells more, it sells more goods. Anytime you sell more goods, advertisers are happy, and the guys on the 50th floor with that MBA that could, care, could not care less about the future of this country, they make more bonus money. Yeah, incredible. Mike Papantonio, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you, Tom. And I think your, your analysis is...